Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. The government of St. Lucia encourages increased levels of competitiveness through the development of a competitive agenda. Media practitioners are now better prepared to report on disaster management. Preparations are underway for International Francophonie Day. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Aquaion. The government of St. Lucia via the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council is seeking to encourage increased levels of competitiveness within St. Lucia via the development of a competitiveness agenda. From March 4th to the 8th, the consultant hired to develop the competitiveness agenda solicited input from key stakeholders on the various pillars of competitiveness which drive economic growth. We have more from Glenn Simon. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC, via funding from Compete Caribbean, commenced work on the National Competitiveness Agenda for St. Lucia. The National Competitiveness Agenda, once completed, will provide the NCPC with the framework to measure how well St. Lucia is performing as it relates to the various actions, policies and initiatives undertaken to improve the island's competitiveness. Fiona Hinkson is the director of the NCPC. When you speak of competitiveness, it's important to benchmark yourself. So the World Economic Forum has established 12 pillars of competitiveness by which we are to measure, well, countries are to measure themselves in terms of how well they are doing in relation to competitiveness. Hingston noted that the 12 pillars of competitiveness are broken down into four main categories, first of which is the creation of the enabling environment. The second category, the human capital, where you look at the skills of the population as well as the health of the population, market in terms of trade, how are you doing in that area, and, and the innovation ecosystem, looking at the ease of doing business and environment as well as the innovation capability. Product development consultant with Compete Caribbean, Dr. Kyron Smith, is part of a two-man team interfacing with various stakeholders on island, soliciting their input for the development of St. Lucia's competitiveness agenda. The, the competitiveness agenda for St. Lucia is expected to, to really to help um, bring together a lot of the, the, the work, a lot of studies and analysis that have gone before um, in terms of identifying uh, St. Lucia's particular economic strengths, particular vision and, and, and direction which it, it wants to go, and really bring those together uh, uh, to help the, the coordination of the action, the implementation of, those, of the recommendations that have been brought forward. He noted that Compete Caribbean operates on the perspective that in order to have a strong and resilient Caribbean, you need a strong and resilient private sector. Carlos Diaz is the Director of Entrepreneurial Competitiveness with Infide. The consultants hired by Compete Caribbean to develop the competitiveness agenda for St. Lucia. Infide is a private international consultancy firm based in Spain, specializing in economic development policies and innovation strategies for national and regional governments around the world. Uh, in this uh, week, we will have uh, a lot of uh, interviews and roundtables uh, with representatives of the uh, pillars of the competitiveness of the country. And um, the focus of these uh, uh, meetings uh, is uh, to uh, um, gather information about the competitiveness and productivity uh, situation of the country. The NCPC director noted that the formulation of the competitiveness agenda for St. Lucia will involve multiple consultations with the private sector, civil society organizations, the youth, among other important stakeholders. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Unit, Glenn Simon reporting. Media practitioners are now better prepared to report on disaster preparedness and mitigation following a training workshop this past weekend. The workshop was put on by the Caribbean Disaster Management Agency, CIDAMA, and NEMO. Janelle Norville reports. The National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, in collaboration with the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, CIDEMA, recently held a disaster risk management training workshop for media practitioners. Forecasters of the MET services were also on hand to provide crucial insight into the meaning of key MET terms, allowing media practitioners a better understanding of information divulged by the entity. 
The workshop, according to Nemo's Program Development Officer, Andrew George, was geared towards increasing the media fraternity's capacity to effectively report on disasters and related events. And when the media person understand what they're reading and what they're saying, it helps in them translating the message and it helps when the message goes to the public. Because the media role is to serve as a vehicle to ensure that the message that is coming from the National Emergency Operations Center gets to the public in time and to make sure that persons act upon that message to change behavior and to ensure that we, are, we develop in San Lucia a culture of safety where persons believe in safety first and ensuring that they understand and they heed the warnings coming from the Met Office and the National Emergency Office. The Program Development Officer also highlighted the importance of disseminating correct information from credible sources. George noted that with the advent of social media, the circulation of false information has been on the rise. He urged media practitioners, however, to ensure that the information being broadcast is from a trustworthy source. The credible source of information is the National Emergency Operations Center. So if there is an emergency that they want credible information, they have to seek it from the National Emergency Management Op Center, and that is coordinated through the Government Information Service so that we understand that we all on the same page and that information coming from NEMO goes through the GIS to the general public and to the other media houses so that it is, it's not about just picking up a story off the line and going online and getting a story and running with it, but double checking, making sure that the source is credible and that what the information that's given to the public is credible. Uh, we can't stop social media from disseminating fake news and fake information, but we think it's the responsibility of the media houses to always ensure that the, the news they give out there is credible and comes from a credible source. The program development officer indicated that the workshop enabled the formation of new relationships and the strengthening of existing ones as NEMO continues to strive to fulfill its mandate. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. St. Lucia is gearing up to celebrate International Francophonie Day. We have more from Anisia Antoine. The International Organization of La Francophonie, in partnership with Alias Forces, has launched the official activities for Francophonie Day 2019. International Francophonie Day is an annual celebration of the French language and the Francophone culture, observed on March 20th within the International Organization of La Francophonie's 77 member states. Marcia Safaria is the national correspondent for the Francophonie. St. Lucia will be joining the rest of the Francophonie community in the observance of Francophonie Month. We celebrate Francophonie Month because we have a number of things in common as a community and one of the things that we share is this linguistic heritage based on the French. But in addition to celebrating our membership to the Francophonie, the, the month is about sharing and promoting OEF's or Francophonie's ideals and its values. And some of those include promoting peace, promoting cultural diversity, promoting the French language, promoting education and training, higher education, research, and the development of cooperation and sustainable development. Alias Forces has organized a series of linguistic and cultural events, including a circus by the French Caribbean Department, a French breakfast, and a French play. Monique August is the cultural supervisor for Alias Forces. We will be putting on Le Petit Prince, an adaption of a very well-known French children's book. After the Bible, it is one of the most translated books in the world. And it follows a story of a narrat the narrator who is trapped in the desert. And he meets a little prince from another planet who tells him about his journey and his findings and his story of how he gets back to his roles. It will be put on as a musical original songs written by French students and will be acted out by French students in St. Lucia as well as French teachers. Alias Forces invites the members of the public to the production which will be showcased on March 20th, 2019 at the St. Joseph's Convent at 7 p.m. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And this is the NCN Nightly, coming up the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really eat?
even know All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do the that No, they do. think about the children Think about the children How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution Use organic and join Excessive agrochemical use, additives and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Hello everyone and welcome once again to your segment on the NTN Nightly News on Happenings at the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. First off, some schools volleyball results from Friday. Miku Secondary won over John Odler Memorial, two games to love, 25-13, 25-20. Leon has Comprehensive were two love winners over Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School, 25-14, 25-20 while St. Mary's College overcame Cardin Secondary two games to one, 25-16, 18-25, Two more matches scheduled in the preliminary stage of the Mass United Schools Cricket Competition on Wednesday, March 13th. Leon has Comprehensive will play Castries Comprehensive at the Grosile Plain Field, and John Adler Memorial will come up against Clendon Mason Memorial at Larry Seuss. Quarter-final match is scheduled for Friday, March 15th. Sufre Comprehensive will face Miku Secondary at the Philip Marsley Ground. Antipo Secondary will tackle Corin Secondary at Balata. The Arthur Lewis Community College takes on Beanfield at Mindufile Park. And St. Mary's College plays Leon Hess Comprehensive at Grosile. The in-depth study on adolescents in St. Lucia is one way to ensure programs targeting young people in St. Lucian society are more likely to achieve desired goals. That's the view of Mary Wilfred, Director of Youth within the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. And so it engages young people to give back to national development, <laughs> prepares them for employment, give them the necessary skills that they need, keep them occupied, and we would also see that they too can earn a little bit from it as they prepare to enter the kind of formal world of work if we want to see that. Before we go, he's letting you know that Northern and Southern qualifiers will soon be staged as the ministry gets set for one of its annual big events in the secondary schools track and field championships. More on that during the week. From the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, I'm Ryan O'Brien saying goodbye. Thanks, Ryan. Reports circulating from international media that an HIV patient is currently in sustained remission from the virus has led experts to believe that the AIDS-causing condition could one day be curable. But the acting senior medical officer in the Infectious Disease Unit says in the absence of more research, HIV patients should continue their treatment to keep their viral loads at bay. It's been nearly 10 years since the first confirmed case of an HIV-infected person being rid of the deadly disease. A man known as the burden patient underwent treatment for leukemia by receiving stem cell transplants from donors carrying a genetic mutation that prevents expression of an HIV receptor known as the CCR5. Reports from international media last week reported its second case, where the same thing happened, this time in a London patient. The revelation has brought hope to experts that HIV can one day be cured, but the acting senior medical officer in the Infectious Disease Unit says not so fast. Patients should continue to take the HIV medication as more research needs to be done on the recent findings. The London patient was diagnosed with HIV in 2003 and had been on antiretroviral therapy since 2012. Following his stem cell transplant, the patient continued HIV treatment for 16 months but wanted to know if his HIV was in remission, so he stopped treatment. 18 months later, his viral load is still undetectable. 
Normally, persons who are infected with HIV and are on HIV treatment, when they stop their treatment, if their viral load had been undetectable, you'll find over the period of months, the viral load would start to increase again. And that's the amount of virus. When I say viral load, we're talking about the amount of virus in the patient's body. So while we're not saying that the patient is cured, right now his HIV viral load is undetectable in the absence of medication. Dr. Gajada notes that while this new information allows for more research to determine whether a cure can be found for HIV, that cure is not currently on the horizon, but rather treatment that can allow for viral loads in patients to become undetectable. We have antiretroviral therapy and we have antiretroviral therapy that is available in St. Lucia. And in order for persons to get their viral load to, to be undetectable, they need to take their medication on a daily basis. That requires commitment and I'm not saying that it's something that's easy, but there are persons in St. Lucia living with HIV who have undetectable viral loads. It is important to know if you are infected with HIV and I want you to think about HIV like diabetes and hypertension. When someone has diabetes, in order to control their sugar, they need to take their medication, be it tablets or insulin or both on a daily basis. If someone has high blood pressure, in order to keep their blood pressure at normal levels, they need to take their medication on a daily basis. Dr. Gajada gave the 2017 statistics for persons living with HIV in St. Lucia. We had 44 persons diagnosed with HIV. Those were new diagnoses. 29, persons of, 29 of those persons were male, 15 of them were female. So we have a ratio of about 2 to 1. In terms of transmission of HIV, 20 of those cases were unknown, 5 of those were transmission, men having sex with men, and the rest were heterosexual transmission. From 2007, we haven't had any transmission from mother to child. The acting senior medical officer encourages persons to know their status and get tested for HIV. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Aquaion. There are signs everywhere. Pay attention whether you're male or female. Visit your health center to get screened. It's a preliminary test to determine if you are exposed to the HIV virus, an STI, or tuberculosis. Some people who are HIV positive also have tuberculosis. But there's hope. Tuberculosis can be cured. And yes, you can live a full life with HIV. Talk to your doctor. Be responsible. Help stop the spread of TB, HIV. Encourage everyone to get tested. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquaire. Merci, Dr. Nisha. Merci, Madame, Department de Responsabilité pour Information en Gouvernement Cetlici, ça c'est GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale pour la NTN. Quand vous êtes au Nouvelle Aquaire, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Club Lyon de Castri a tué en la peine moun ki ka soufè et puis sida en pays. Récemment, Club la fait yon représentation plusieurs pain de devais atik manje en distribution pour ces moun sala ki véritablement brisé assistance. Docteur ki ka tube position pour pou moment kon chef officier médecin et ki responsabilité pour département des maladies ki ka simé hod yon moun pou lot, Docteur Gil Gajada, parler di gratitude pour Club Lyon de Castri pour support et compassion. Selon le Dr. Gajada, la jani presque trois mois depuis que ce monde a trouvé un petit assistance. Alors, ça a été un déo pour visiter la clinique là et pour aussi recevoir assistance pour manger avec l'autre la brisée. Dr. Gajada n'y a pas que l'autre organisation qui continue pour offrir assistance pour les gens qui ont souffert de maladie sida. Selon le Dr. Gajada, il est très appréciable pour les gens et aussi les groupes qui a prétend et pour assister ces patients ces là Il a aussi ajouté que n'importe quel de là qui a désir pour aider le département, il a apprécié ça tout bonnement. Docteur Gajada a remarqué aussi le service gouvernement a fait un pour assister. Alors, n'importe quel assistance qui a trouvé a aidé en pile. Ces patients là aussi ont 12 points de divers articles manger. Pour observation, journée pour deux personnes qui ont acheté en diverses façons produits et belles pratiques au long de la terre, 
association cette ici qui est-ce que ça pour adresser à faire cela qu'il y a plusieurs activités observation c'est vendredi le 15 mars avec des grands chefs qui engagés dans l'association ça là parler puis nous concernant sa société là j'ai accompli avec ces diverses activités qui ont été pour observation ça là Robert James qui était président association en temps passé et former nous qui a parmi ces activités là qui visitation en diverses communes pour expliquer travail discussion et puis organisation maman et papa discussion et puis les enfants l'école avec les parents avec la parents sur radio et télévision tout ça pour éduquer peuple là à sous doyo les qui acheter divers articles et ben marchandises si bagay la pas travail bien ben si on pas satisfait et puis ça yo yo j'ai acheté ben ça c'est mon baio nous ca faire ce bagay ça là nous ca imadé business place là pour 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 aller chercher mon autre yo yo coton c'est mon ca acheter bagay la mais yo pour baio bagay bah on a des bagages vieux même si c'est half prix et ben hold et ben acheter yon n'a qui que bah yon pour rien et ben half half prix pour l'autre pour les autres là nous qui allez bah yo bah ils m'ont information pour 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 un de yon coupon qui ça yon 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 acheter un chai ce ce bagage ça là tellement mon qui acheter bagage et qui au pas qu'un coupon qui ça yon 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 fait yo yo ka de la clé quand même mais mais pas te savent que am me tenir pour faire ça et ben ça c'est ça c'est ça c'est pour ça te me tenir droit pour faire ça nous gagne dieu les yo ka acheter bagaille les yo ka am acheter mon ko yo ka acheter mon con con mon qui ka bil ka et mon qui ka am am qui ka am sauver qui ka ka sauver am am te tout ce monde là nous ka chaîne chai complet d'abord ce monde là ka dire moi payer mon ça comme l'année il pas jamais am fini faire faire bagarre sur mauvais l'argent moi vie qui m'a nous ca nous ca au sein de nous pour nous ajouter jeune am am l'argent nous besoin nous besoin faire la faire vite so on cherche ce ce complain ça la ca venir et puis nous nous pour joindre pour parler que c'est mon pour joindre qui m'a pour nous ça adresser ça pour ce mon ça une satisfaction pour ça yo j'ai payé pour directeur pour département des affaires mon qui a acheté et ben les pratiques Guillaume uh, Simon observe qui en lo moun ka servi divers atik teknoloji ko phone mobile, téléphone mobile et ben télévision ki savan mais yo pa ni la chargesse la pou konprann an pile an se divers fason ki sa ka pou e selon M. Simon an pile de lè yo ka an ni d'accord pou suiv cet agreement sans sa sa yo ka fè avec lè ou d'accord de lè ou ka ou d'accord pou pou transmit information pou lòt moun Oui, puisque mais ben l'autre compagnie, puisque attendu qu'à vous à présent, les formations, c'est ça qu'à qui on achète, avec un bon cas protecter ça, avec un bon cas vendre ça, avec des le ou bon cas si pour les yodi, les petites, on institue ce qui est au am offre yo et ben à gamba au 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 offre, qui mange rien les formations ouais, des le ou pas bah ils vont pas pas bah ils vont directement les formations mais ou di voici ou ben ou si ou bay kwadi el i agree to share my information et ou pa même ça c'est ça aussi avec toute information tout partout et de le pa vle moun konnèt za fò so nous avons droit man nou ka fè consumer affaires département c'est là nou ka try rené moun parler ki yo informe yo a sou droit yo responsabilité yo in terms of protecting protecting um um doyo ko consumer yo na se ekwivan poezi ki pli avanse a pe set ici j'a produit yo publication de tout se gran ekwivan poezi ek lot se je monsieur robert li pale et puis nou konsene signifikans liv sa la ek wezo ko ete nesese pou publie yo mos ou travay kon sa nou ni dere ko al kat nou ni ko al kat kan le plet mcdonald dixon jen king Yoja écrit et publié livre. C'est mon vrai ça qui laisse livre à Yoja Yoja écrit, Yoja publié. Ça ça servait petit livre ça là. Et il a joint non livre là qui l'année livre là a été publié par comme ça. Mon qui a fait recherche en littérature synthétique. Ça servait ça pour faire étudier. Monsieur Lika Kweki 
publication ça là qui a indiqué les jeunes écrivains regarder ça qui était déjà là avant pour y apprendre de ça et suivre direction qui était déjà établie grand écrivain poésie aussi qui a tué plusieurs autres responsabilités confessé de communication et éducation en institution que tout pays ça c'est place recherche folklore donc organiser um, éducation programme éducation pour les enfants pour les élèves à l'école nous mais aussi l'année euh, nouvelle pour les médias, qui a fait ça pour faire aussi. Et qui a arrangé la bibliothèque là pour faire aussi. Quand ça, nous tenions un grand défi en mars. Tout va être détruit. Donc, actuellement, nous avons essayé pour, pour réétablir la et la bibliothèque la C'est ça que nous fait. Livre cela available en tous ces magasins livres qui ont existé en cette ci Et c'est comme ça nous avons une bonne nouvelle aujourd'hui. Monsieur, mesdames, je vous remercie autant pour garder mon cabot et invitation pour que je puisse moi encore les gars présenter autre nouvelle nouvelle accueil. À présent, nous avons pour Nisha. Merci au Pearl Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Low-level clouds drifting with a moderate easterly wind flow will bring some occasional showers over the Lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. Skies are fair, becoming cloudy at times with some scattered showers. The tide for Castries was low at 12.48 p.m. and will be high at 7.20 p.m. The tide for VA4 Bay was low at 2.15 p.m. and will be high at 8.27 p.m. The seas moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 6.13 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.